What is a RACI chart? Project managers everywhere use RACI charts. Let's examine what exactly a RACI chart is and what it looks like. The RACI chart was developed in the 1950s but popularized in the 70s. It is not exactly clear who created the RACI chart, but it caught like wildfire when Stephen Covey in his popular best-selling book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, was released in 1989. The acronym RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consult, Inform. Here's an example of a RACI chart. You can see we have the project manager, a role, engineer, an analyst, all roles on the vertical axes of this table. On the horizontal or x-axis, we have the requirements, design, test, project communication, and training. And it becomes very clear from this, who is responsible? In other words, who is the doer? And when it comes to the requirements, we can see the project manager and the engineer, they're the doers. But who is ultimately answerable for the requirements? Of course, it's the analyst. When it comes to the design, the project manager should be consulted, but the engineer is ultimately answerable. Who should be informed? The analyst. When it comes to testing, we can see the engineer is ultimately answerable. The analyst is one of the doers. The project manager should be informed. And when it comes to project communication, here we can see an A and an R. Is this allowed? Absolutely. It is allowed that we have a responsible person also being accountable. However, where possible, we would prefer that you allocate the job to someone else. If it's not possible, we could have an A and an R. Now, what we cannot have in a RACI chart is two A's in any column. So when it comes to requirements, there's only one A. When it comes to design, there's only one A. When it comes to test, only one A. Communication, only one A. We cannot have two A's in here. Absolutely not. And this used to be one of the trick questions on professional exams, like the PMP exam. You'd see a RACI chart, and the question would be, what is wrong with this RACI chart? And the answer would usually be, there shouldn't be two A's in any one task. So let's dive a little bit deeper and see what this means. R, responsible, also called recommender those who do the work. This is from Wikipedia, so if you want to read the entire document, go on down to Wikipedia and look for the RACI chart. A stands for accountable, also the approver or final approving authority. C is for consulted, sometimes consultant or counsel, those whose opinions are sought, typically subject matter experts with whom there's two-way communication. When it comes to I, informed, the informee, those who are kept up to date on progress, often only on completion of the task or deliverable, and with whom there is just one-way communication. Very often, the role that is accountable for a task or deliverable may also be responsible for completing it, as I showed you in the matrix. Outside of this exception, it is generally recommended that each role in the project or process for each task receive at most just one of the participation types so that we stop passing the buck. Where more than one participation type is shown, it generally implies that participation has not yet been fully resolved, which can impede the value of this technique in clarifying the participation of each role on each task. Now, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. You got to do what works for your team. Here's another example of a RACI chart. And here you can see I reversed it. I put the roles on the x-axis and the tasks on the y-axis. It's a matrix. You can flip a matrix anyhow you want. So if I'm an HR manager and I look down, I can see all the things I'm responsible for. Legal team, I'm responsible, consultative, responsible, and I can see the, the tasks. So update the company handbook. Uh, the CEO is accountable. Develop new employee training. CEO is accountable. The CEO is accountable for almost everything, in fact, everything. And what can we infer from this? Probably a, a small company or a startup or a CEO that doesn't have capable people to be accountable. A RACI chart can tell you a story, can tell you a lot. So how do you create a RACI chart? You identify the task. In the example, I'll show you the six tasks involved in launching a new product. 
We identify the stakeholders, people who could be involved. Then we assign the RACI roles, responsible, the individuals or people performing the task, accountable, ultimately answerable or ultimately accountable, consulted, the individuals or groups who must be consulted, and I informed the individuals or groups who need to be kept informed about the progress of the task. Then we fill in the chart using RACI roles. We fill in the chart to clearly identify who is responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. Just beware, you don't want there to be two ways in any one task. And by using this, the stakeholders involved in launching the product would clearly understand their roles and responsibilities. So here's another example. I have whittled this down and I have only included a few of the items mentioned. Here we can see the task, updating the company handbook, developing new employee training, implementing new project management software, launch of a marketing campaign, and you got your new product. And there we have the R, the A, the C, and the I, this time as the X axis. So there are many ways you can develop a RACI chart. You can have the tasks either on the X or the Y. You can have the RACI as different entries in the intersection points, or you can just have responsible, accountable, consulted, informed. And what this is showing us is, as far as updating the handbook, it's that person. The only problem with this is you would find it hard to track each of these roles or names, if you will. And where we would have these names, you, you find them scattered all over the place. There's HR manager, there's HR manager over there. There's IT director over there, IT team. It's somewhat scattered. My preference, what I like seeing is something like this. The RAC and the I, I can look right down that row and see what has been assigned to me. Or, if not that, then this, where you flip the X and the Y axis. And that's really the summary, my friends, about the RACI chart and its origin. I hope you found this to be useful. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.